My headlight looks like a Transformer's eyeball right now. Hello. Today is actually my birthday, the day that I'm filming this. And all of you want to see the conclusion of the projector headlight retrofit I am doing on the Forester. If you're new and you're wondering what the hell is going on right now, up above my head is a link to the last video that will kind of fill you in. And it's important if you're watching for the retrofit. So if you want to see how I came to this finished product right here on the other side, I still have to do that headlight. I had to come out to the abandoned warehouse to shoot some B-roll for this next car view I'm doing on this Genesis G90. I have to do them on two separate days because it's just too much work for me to do all in one day and have good lighting for it all. How many of you remember this car? That was a long time ago. There's a link up above to a couple videos on it if you want to check those out. It's my old Avant Wagon project car. Charlie sold it to one of his best friends and they're actually working on it today, trying to figure out a boost leak. Cause it has a boost leak. Had a boost leak. Oh wait, so you didn't buy it stock? No, cause it had the chip on it when I bought it. Oh, so you tuned it and then sold it to him tuned? Mm -hmm. So this is just like a stage one tune? Qu stage one? I think it's stage two. I think it's stage two. Oh, cause it has downpipe. It has down, downpipe and ex full exhaust. Oh, and then I gave you my old KO4 off the TT. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the exhaust manifold will fit it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Came to check on the Focus and figure I'd give you guys an update on what's going on with that. The roll cage I purchased for it, that's supposed to be a direct weld-in cage for this car, it does not fit the car at all. It actually fits terrible and three bars need to be remade from scratch in order for this cage to work. So the two A-pillar bars right here and the main hoop are actually way too small for this car, even though this was purchased directly for this generation focus. It lists on the website as a direct weld-in cage for this exact car, but it does not. I don't like putting companies on blast on my channel because it's not really professional, but a uh, word of caution. If you were to try to weld it in, your bars for their side on the door would go through the center of the seat. A little bit pissed off about it, but Charlie's fabricator and he's gonna rebend some new bars to make this work and I'll just eat the loss of buying that 600 something dollar cage. If you guys are curious to see the content on the roll cage and its fabrication, Charlie's gonna be uploading that on his YouTube channel along with what's going on on their Audi Quattro Avant 1.8T and uh, the dirt bike that him and Alan are working on. Hi, it's the next day. It might be a little bit loud throughout the rest of this video because they're having some work done on a house next to me. So there's like saws and nail guns and music playing and stuff. There's not much I can do about it. So, oh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Oof, that's kind of heavy with one hand. All right. Finish the retrofit. Like you already saw in the beginning of the video, I have one of them done on the front Forester already. I did that just to save time because filming while doing this is extremely time consuming and I wanna get this all done for you in this video. I know someone is gonna be wondering why I trim the bottom of one of these shrouds that goes around the projector. And the reason is if I decide to hook up the auto leveling motors that I have for these headlights, I just gotta get the sensor that goes in the rear suspension the projector is going to then tuck down inside the shroud when I have a lot of weight in the back of the Forester. So when it's sitting level, it's actually the projector will be sitting higher inside the headlight. It's probably really confusing, but just I'm explaining it in case someone wants to know. Someone is going to ask that question. Somebody. That right there is a motor I was talking about for the auto leveling. It doesn't really do me much good right now though because I don't have the rest of the wiring for the car for that to work. I've never once had any issues though with these projectors that have been retrofitted on the Forester now for going on four years of them being too bright. No one's ever flashed me. I will however hold on to these little packs in case I ever want to retrofit those on there. I will need you and I will need you and uh, that's it. This guy right here. I need to retrofit onto the other harness. That way my boomerang will have a power source and a ground. Let's do those without slicing my finger open. That would be nice. 
All I do from the factory is tie this LED boomerang into the side marker light. So the ground right here is just piggybacked and the power as well. This is just the power supply for the side marker light. So cut them. There we go. Engage time lapse. There you go, it's wired up just like factory. This guy right here is going to plug into the back side of the headlight after I bore a hole for it to plug into and then I'll power up the boomerang. Okay, looks like uh, roughly there. I'm gonna warn you in advance, this is not going to be perfect and pretty but it's going to be functional. I'm trying my best, I'm using a Dremel. This smells like it will give you brain damage. What was I saying? Holes. Holes. That's what's up, just like OEM. It locks into place and everything. Nice watertight connection, and this guy right here plugs into the back side of the shroud with the LED part. Go in your hole, this is your hole. Go in your hole. My headlight looks like a Transformers eyeball right now. This guy goes to my high beams right here. This guy is for the solenoid for the biazenon. If you're wondering how I'm remembering how to put all this together, they're all labeled, see, ballast. So this guy goes up to my ballast pack up here. Last step, this guy right here. If you already own an SJ Generation Forester with the pre-facelift headlights that have this LED boomerang on them, just in case you were wondering, this is how it's illuminated on the back side. It has this little clear fiber optic tube and the LED lights transmit through these tubes right here. This is where the only bulb is located at. So if you want to modify them and actually make a functional DRL, I'm sure you could just remove this clear tube and run your own strip of LED behind it. This thing is super, super delicate. The little clear plastic tabs on here will snap if you are not careful. So be highly careful doing this stuff. Like if you think you're being careful, you're not being careful enough type of careful. I think that's good. Robot guts, just like that. I keep feeling like I'm gonna get a shot by a nail gun, like a nail's gonna come flying through the wall. I don't think that's possible. I don't construction much, I don't know. I'm gonna set this guy just set it just like that for now. This is the exciting part. Test, test time. Here goes nothing. Hell yeah, dude. That works, it works good. So far so good, test out my hazard lights. I put LEDs in there, I didn't even change the relay yet. I did order one though, a tap turn one, so it has the automatic three blink feature. I didn't have that in 2014 through 16 in these. Time to put the last batch in the oven. <laughs> this is the scary part, is taking this thing back off, because if any of this Occubutyl sealed to the other Occubutyl, you can break the plastic taking it back apart. And I gotta undo the little wire for the day timer back here. Looks like I killed a ferret. I did not kill a ferret. I'm gonna use this to clean out the inside of the lens before I put it back together, since you pretty much can't touch anything inside there. Same thing with the chrome. Give that a nice clean. Give this a nice clean. Last way. Just like that. 
I'm really excited to get this forester done. It's been sitting in my garage now for like two weeks just to do these headlights. If I wouldn't have filmed any of this, it probably would have took me like three or four days to do this retrofit start to finish. One, two, three. Yeah, that's all the screws. I do plan on polishing this headlight, but you are not gonna see it in this YouTube video. Just there's not enough time to do this much work in one video. Open up my little door that I made. Just like that, nice and watertight. Plug you into your home, just like that. In the oven you go, headlight. Just FYI, if you removed a bunch of the Occubutyl when you took the headlight apart, you might wanna buy some to reseal it with. I have some up in one of these totes, but I'm gonna seal it back up and then I'll run a final bead after it's all back together. Okay, hot headlight, hot headlight. best to screw this thing all together while the glue is nice and hot because then it sucks all the pieces together when you turn the screws. After I screw the two pieces together I go over the edge with a heat gun and use a rag and smooth out all the butyl all along the edges like that so there's no gaps. I get a surprising amount of comments from people regarding my wardrobe changes in these videos. That's why I put that slide in there that says the following day. Because at the end of the day, I take a shower and then I put my clothes in a hamper so I can wash them. The next day, I change to a different outfit. Glad we got that covered. Let's get the nose of this gump back on where it's supposed to be. Ooh, muscles. I already got a bug on the headlight just from driving it down the street to adjust the headlights last night. I gotta zip tie all these lines up before I put the bumper cover on because that would be a royal ass pain to try to do this with the bumper in place. I can't put this back on looking like that inside there. That's disgusting. Just when I thought I was almost done. Gotta clean it. Much better. Oh yeah, this is slicing the absolute crap out of my arm. I don't know why, but I find putting these snapper doodles back in their home super satisfying. I have a tradition with Gump that I go out and watch the sunset with him, and I know how pathetic that sounds because this is a car, but it's just something I've been doing since I bought the Forester. And I decided to take him out here and get some- Ow, there's an ant biting my wrist! <laughs> face. This was a ton of work for just a subtle change. Now it has a little boomerang up here. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same in the headlight. Which are done other than the fact that I need to polish the lenses and ceramic coat them. I'm gonna get out the rest of the little rock chips that are on there. And it kind of flows nicely with the DRL that's down here in the bumper. Now these ones are technically knockoffs of the JDM ones. The JDM ones were $400 and there's only four LED bulbs in it. This one has 11 bulbs and I think these look a lot cleaner than just having four little dots that illuminate. quarters here. Well, that's that. Projector retrofit is pretty much done as far as YouTube goes. And uh, next up on the gump, I got to do my roll center bump steer gauge to make sure everything's copacetic with the alignment since I did the coilovers. If not, there'll be more parts getting installed in that department. And then the big brake retrofit from some Brembos from an STI. 
and uh, eventually end game six speed manual swap. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another. Bye.